Hi, Jeff here, and uh, I've got a special little film for you now. This is the uh, Jurash University Permaculture Project. Um, it's almost a year old now, and um, I've got some really interesting things to show you. Our site consists of three main areas. We have the polytunnel vegetable growing system, and it's the uh, end of summer, going towards winter now. And we have a chicken composting system incorporated in it. And then as we sweep around the mountain landscape, it's a lot cooler up here at this altitude than it is in the Dead Sea Valley. We have our commercial composting system. We have a 75 horsepower tractor with a creeper gear. Um, we have a compost turner and we have a wood chipper and we're making compost at a commercial rate. And then we have our 1,000 square meter olive monoculture conversion to a polyculture. So there's 1,000 square meters there roughly of olives and that's what we inherited. And they actually are being diversified into a more polycultural system. Now we have comparisons because there's olives all around us in a monoculture bare soil. We also have a water tank on top of the hill, right now being filled from a water tanker. So let's take them on one at a time. So our diverse polyculture of vegetables, well, I'll call it a polyculture because it has chickens. We've got uh, egg boxes, but they're locked because we're recording every single bit of production. And our chickens here are producing compost. Uh, they're integrated into the polytunnel. And the polytunnel is fertilized by the chickens. And all of this is mixed vegetables. So we have eggplants and chilies and okra and, and multiple mixed beds. They're all on drip irrigation. But let's have a look at our natural fertilizer. This is all very easily achieved. We're getting egg production and they're providing a lot of manure. We are bringing some in and we are bringing some straw in, but most of the food waste from the system and the old crops go through the compost. And they reckon they're as good, if not better, than the commercial production with the big machines. Now we also have worm farms and they're dripping worm juice. So we've got our worm farms going on here. They're being fed and we've got some good worms. And we've got incredible diversity through our system. It's one great big diverse vegetable garden and everything's being weighed, all the production coming out and it's all getting sold locally. So we know what we're producing, we know how much it's worth in monetary value. And this is the end of summer. So we're in Mediterranean, high altitude, so we're about 900 meters above sea level. And uh, it's pretty hot in summer. And now we're going towards winter where we have actually a different set of production. So we have mixed herbs, both scented and culinary, all the way through the system. There's a lot of parsley, there's a lot of eggplant, there's a lot of okra. And here's oregano, which is used to make za'atar, uh, which is a big product here in the Middle East. So celery here as well. Uh, it, it's not really that conventional. If you understand what you're looking at, there's a lot of diversity here. There's a pretty good looking capsicum there. Some going red inside there. So it's real diversity. It's totally organic. And the soil is improving all the time because we're continuously adding compost. So there's, it's easier to produce. The, the production is improving continuously with less effort because the soil is getting better all the time. So let's have a look at the comparison to this. So this is the ag department and the university. They've grown a crop of cucumbers in one polytunnel. They've finished and they've walked away. 
They've also grown a crop of eggplants in another polytunnel. Then they've pulled all the plastic mulch out, laid it around, no real recycling, and they've put the tractor through the polytunnel and they've ploughed it up. So uh, that's preparation for the winter crop. We've been producing every single day of the year we're harvesting and we're still harvesting. And the way we're going with the system we've got, there's no reason to stop ever. The soil's getting better all the time. Where this soil is just getting smashed. One crop, plastic mulch, irrigation, bit of a mess, scratch it all off, leave it lying around and plow it up with a tractor. Put a load of fertilizer down, put your next crop in for winter. One crop, summer, one crop, winter, walk away. Not really the most sustainable system you could ever imagine. Traditionally, we just plow the ground, get all the weeds off, all the grass off, don't plant any associates. When it rains, it washes all the soil away from the little rocks and you end up with more and more rocks. And in the end, you just have olives in a field of rocks. Using large machinery, we're demonstrating how you can make compost at a commercial level for a larger scale. And although materials have been reasonably hard to get because you, you can't transport manure on the ground in Jordan, unless only locally in a local area, you can't move it from one area to another. But we've managed, and this is how we're making our commercial compost. Now this is something that's interesting to larger farmers. It demonstrates that we can make organic fertilizer en masse. And it could be improved. At least they're trying to make good compost. We also have our commercial wood chipper, because we need wood chip, as well as green material. And we need chipped large service area, woody material, brown material, and we need green material. And then we need manure to make our mixes. A lot of our woody material is actually a bit too hard. You're better off with soft material. I actually find most non-legume weedy trees are really good. They're often straight trunked, fast growing, and go through a chipper much easier than some of this hard stuff, which is a lot of, a lot of hard work for the chipper. Uh, Eliathis, tree of heaven, is one of the great ones. Tacoma stands uh, in the more tropical areas. There, there are a lot of weed trees that grow really fast, that's why they call them weeds, that are not legumes, that give you a high carbon mulch, and you need to specialize in those. Uh, there's all these little subtleties to learn about gathering the right materials, making it easy work on the machinery and the workers. So uh, here's our olive monoculture conversion to polyculture. We put in the support species and the mulch, and we've reshaped the land. Now, they're not perfectly on contour because the olives weren't planted on contour, but we went for the best levels we could. So we've got drip irrigation on all the trees. It's been one of the hardest parts of the demonstration to convince people to do this. But we have a lot more food in here now coming up. Row is more or less level. There are swales. And we'll see how they go this winter when we start getting some decent rain because it's a classic Mediterranean climate, dry all summer and doesn't rain till winter when it's cooler. And let's run through the type of trees we've got in the system. Mulberry. Pomegranate with fruit. They're fruiting okay at the moment. Fig. And apricot. Now the idea was to have a leucina between each tree like this, and we've got a leucina, we've got a fig, and we've got a leucina, and then another olive. But there's different spacings that we have to work with. So some have all four. And now we have a leucina, and a pomegranate, and a leucina, 
one of the old olives, a leucina, and it looks like our apricots died out in this case. That happens. A leucina, an olive. Some have already gone dark here. They're black olives there. And a fig, and a pomegranate, and a leucina. And on it goes, all the way through the system. You always get some dropping off, but that's the way it is. It'll get better over time. So we've got a mulberry, a pomegranate, a little one fruiting like crazy, a leucina, one of the big olives, a leucina, a fig, and an apricot. So that's our combination. Apricot, fig, pomegranate, and mulberry interplant all the way through the system. Now, this needs a winter and it's gonna get one now. We're going into winter. The guys are keeping it nicely dressed up and we're gonna let all the herbs come through. Hasn't had a chance to get a winter flush yet, but this is its chance. So I'm, I'm actually very excited about this. And now after the heat of summer, we can start fertilizing with some of that amazing compost. So they've got it well mulched. We're gonna bring in the ground covers like I say, it's been difficult because everything is an olive monoculture around us forever in all directions, right across Jordan. This is a way to diversify the system so you don't bear soil, you get better olives, you get a mixture of fruit all at the same time. You diversify your income and you end up being more financially secure and fertility secure. So I love it. I think it's gonna be great. It's just taken a bit of adjustment to get it working. There we go. Olive orchard enhancement to polyculture. What a great little project for the Middle East or anywhere Mediterranean dry lands.